I think in the early chapters of your story in your book about your wedding day, Mary, you know, the most beautiful day uh, it should have been in your life. Um, and yet you hear about, um, you hear news and everything changes. Well, funnily enough, well, I'm the oldest of nine and a lot of responsibility in that and I always wanted older brothers. So a few doors up from where I lived, um, there was a family of um, O'Reilly's and the two boys, two, well, there were a big family, 13 of them, and I loved them. I was in and out of their house. I had them tormented, but particularly Tony and Miles, two of the boys who were my kind of surrogate big brothers. Yeah. They bought a, a restaurant and pub uh, where, in fact, Martin and I had intended having our wedding reception. Um, until um, uh, and we intended having a small wedding. It ended up being bigger. Uh, Tony, of course, we had gone back and forth to them talking about the wedding. And when I told him about the numbers, you know, because I'm, I'm from a really big clan, he said, your man never put up with that. And so anyway, we ended up moving it to a hotel in Newry. And um, on the morning of my wedding, uh, loyalists, my father warned them not to buy the place they bought, incidentally. He, he was worried about where really? it was. But... Um, Loyalist paramilitaries came in and on that morning shot them and then set fire to them both and killed them. And if you've ever been at a wedding reception, you know, where the, the crack literally dies and you've no idea why. That's what happened at my wedding. Just sort of halfway through the meal, I realised that the bounce had gone out of it, but I hadn't a clue why. I actually thought, my God, somebody belonging to me has, you know, has had a row with somebody belonging to Martin. Mm. And... Um, but then they were so anxious to get rid of us, to get us away. We were going down to Dublin for the first night and then on to Kerry. And I, I couldn't believe how quickly they wanted rid of us. So, you know, we got into our good clothes and off we went. And, when we, and But I was told emphatically leaving, don't ring home now. Just have your honeymoon. Don't bother ringing. Um, don't read newspapers. And after we had our first lovely meal in Dublin, you know, as a married couple, and um, I thought, well, I'll ring home just in case. So that, 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 the words don't ring home mm. bothered me. Mm. And that's when I found out, um, that's when I found out that Tony and Miles were dead. And when you think of your own house was, was, uh, it was the subject of a des desperate attack too. And there's a whole generation listening to, to or watching you tonight, Mary, going, they what? And, and we as a generation of parents have to turn around and say, yeah, that's what happened. There was these tit for tat. It was just horrible. I mean, where did it go except round and round in circles? And I suppose because I'd lived in a Protestant neighbourhood adjacent, you know, adjacent to a Catholic neighbourhood, mm. um, I kind of could see that there but for the grace of God go I in any of those circumstances. Oh.